towards you, so you can see my back is motion. I center my front hand, I open. Now you see when I do this, I don't go all the way back here. When I go all the way back here, my center of gravity needs to turn, but my knee remains the same. So it's having a, a problem because it's pulling towards that back hand because my neck and face is pulling towards that back hand. And I'm exaggerating, but I see some of you doing it. So what I want you to do is remember, when you play your lute, all I'm asking you to is center that front hand. This is across from my body. But to repulse the monkey, I want you to go slightly more than the side of your body. So if this is a 90 degree, I want you to come out to about a 100 or 110, but not something more over there, okay? Once you feel that your dantian is moving because your arm is moving back there, then it's a little bit too much. It can move slightly, but not a lot. So can you give me left foot on a heel, right foot rooted, and play your lute. Everybody got that. So the left hand is centering your body. Your right hand is at your elbow. Not parallel hands, but the right hand slightly dips towards your elbow. It's a little oblique. When we open, we drop our front foot. We center, not quite opening that palm, Finding that 100 feet, then open. This is where you are now. Then you're going to lift, and at the same time, you're going to put your hand to your ear. All right? So then I want you to put your hands down. So this is what I want to work on. And that's the same position. Okay, so the foot you know that lifts up can never go behind this foot and it can never go behind this foot in this manner because I'm on the line and I'm using that same plane which is a misalignment. Okay? So we were taught many times that when we lift we extend the knee and come back away from the front foot because the next motion now has to be a twist in. When you twist in, you need the clearance to come through. You cannot tell me, I know what she needs away, but then if it's too close and you come down, you know, and you drag back, it's going to be a misalignment. So the best way I know how to teach you is visually, because you can check yourself, is you put your left foot on a line. Do it with me. Lift your left foot up. Come out to its own block. Then twist inward to a heel. Then check your stance. Drag your right foot that's on the line all the way back. And does it block your left foot? If the answer is it doesn't, then that's, that's what I want. And actually, you don't have to drag because why? When you when you lift up, out, in, you can already see that this back foot is not on the, the right foot's line, so it's never going to it's never going to intersect, right? All right. So what does it take to get there? Can I show you first? This is my lute. This is my open. This is my lift. This is my out, my in, okay? This is, so what I want you to notice is that I extend my knee on the foot that needs to go backwards besides placing it away from that line of my other foot. So this is what I said. I said, right foot on the line, playing our knee, moving it on the back foot. When I open, I know I have to center that front hand. I know I can't go all the way down. I'm in my Dante dress position. I root down, then my left foot can go up. If I'm only semi-rooted, I'm going to have a harder time. I'm stable when I'm rooted. So I lift up. When I lift up, I extend my knee and at the same time bring my hand to my ear. I put my heel down, 
I pivot to the middle and I pull back. Center, push, pull. Listen carefully. Center, 110 degree, open and look at it, but don't turn your torso. Lift, ear, toe, heel, middle, push, pull. I'm going to watch. Center, open, lift, ear, toe, heel, middle, push, pull. Center, you know, first of all, you got to center that hand. You have to make that 110. You have to have that Dantin addressing to the front and not twist it over. Then when you lift, it's a counterbalance. This guy is higher because this guy is helping me. Toe, you see where my toe went out, way out there? Then when it comes down, it can't hit that front foot if I were to drag it. It's way out. This is what I'm seeing you do, okay? I hope I can do it without too much. So you, you're good here. You come up, you come out, but you come right back in here. This is not good. Um, can I just hold on one thing? So this is the root. If I do this, it's wrong. It, what am I doing wrong? I'm using my torso making my dance go look at that back hand is too much of a different angle. We need to address it softly like this so that you see this portion, this portion is actually moving to look at it. But the whole thing like this, because then you're misaligned. So you're saying, one, my front hand is aligning my dance. Really good. But if you want to go just this way, you're losing that alignment and you just redo that. So you keep this, you turn only this way and go. Then you lift, counterbalance by keeping it up a little higher, out, in, middle, with a pivot, push and pull. Now, one of the ways to tell you this, yes, you got to be able to deal with the body weight and motion. So, so I'm not asking you to get that foot up so high that you're going to have to wobble. Okay? But one of the key ways to keep your balance is to make sure that you root it down, not just showing me down root it. This is really down when I actually flex that knee and I feel my weight all on it. It's a big difference. Now, the second way to do it is keeping up this hand higher because it's a counterbalance to getting this guy up. It's giving me a little leverage, okay? But beyond that, this foot that comes up, you have to extend the knee. Once you extend the knee, it's going to look for something way back there. If you come up and you only don't extend the knee, what is it going to do? It's going to pop right here, giving you more of a chance of being so when you lift, you extend the knee and make that whole extension happen for you to come back. Okay. It's not that easy, but what I see you doing can cause harm over the repetition. So I want to try to um, And you have four times at it. So maybe sometimes after the two times you say, hey, I got it. And then the third and fourth time, you're a little bit in a relaxed mode, and that's when you need to be aware.